So here's a few things you don't see every day, a box copy of Windows 1.0 and a frickin' massive computer to install it on. This right here is a Zenith Data Systems ZFA-13842 portable computer from the 1980s, or probably luggable is a better word for machines like this. It was recently given to me by a friend of mine, and we were able to confirm that it works with the included copy of MS-DOS 3, but I promised you guys that we would be installing this box copy of Windows 1.0 shortly after I got it back a couple videos ago. So, let's do that. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So before we jump into the installation process, I just want to briefly talk a little bit about this computer and we'll also open it up and I'll show you what's inside. So spec wise, this thing has an 8088 running at eight megahertz with a 4.7 megahertz switch there on the front that you can use to change the processor speed. And this dual floppy configuration would have come standard with 256 kilobytes of RAM, but that could have been upgraded to as high as around 600 kilobytes, which is what we have in this system right here, which is great because although Windows 1.0 can run on 256K, Windows 1.03, the specific version that I have here, actually requires 320 kilobytes of memory to run. And judging from some old newspaper clippings I found, you could have picked up one of these things back in 1986 for around $1,000. Now you've probably noticed, as I first did when I pulled off the keyboard here, that uh, there's no cable connecting the keyboard to the computer. It's actually detachable as you can see so we got a port there and a port here on the front that's because the cable is actually stored in this nice little compartment on top and believe it or not as simple as this is it's actually one of my favorite features of this computer because you can see this compartment is rather large so you don't only have room for the keyboard cable but you can also fit the power cable in here and maybe even a thing of business cards to carry around with you when you were traveling with this thing and the detachable keyboard means that yes it takes a little little bit longer to set up, but it's much easier to swap out the keyboard with a new one if that breaks, or use an entirely different keyboard if you want this to be permanently set up at home. Taking a look at the rear here, or the top if you have the thing standing up, we've got a handle, which was like a mandatory requirement for all of these things, and we have a nice little port door that you can take off by rotating these, and that uh, covers all of your I.O. So we've got from left to right, parallel serial RGB composite video, we have your power port, your power switch up here, your contrast dial for the monitor, and we also have a single ISIS slot for expansion. Now, one of my other favorite features with this thing, especially when you compare it to a more mainstream portable system like the compact portable, is how easy that it is to get inside of it, because all you have to do is remove these four screws. And then this top plastic piece just pulls back and lifts off. And I'll just take you into freehand mode here to bring you around the inside of the case. So, got your power supply over there, got your CRT right here, two floppy drives there, the motherboard underneath, and here is your ISO slot, which is actually contained on a daughter board. This is also a favorite feature of mine because, I mean, obviously it makes the entire system just much easier to work on. You could easily just pull this thing apart, upgrade it, service it, uh, really do whatever you want. But yeah, there's a little system overview for you. Now we're going to go ahead and pop in um, MS-DOS 3 disk at number 1 into uh, drive A, and we'll power this thing on and start the installation process for Windows 1.0. All right, so it asks us the current date. We're going to put uh, not the current date. We'll just do 1-1-1986. And we'll leave the current time as that, uh, that's fine. Um, so, now we're going to reach for our set of Windows 1.03 installation diskettes. And I'm going to pop in diskette number 1 into drive B. And we'll swap over to drive B. And let's just do a DIR here. And yeah, it's reading the disk okay, so let's run uh, setup. And I do have a good amount of uh, blank five and a quarter inch diskettes here because we are going to need a, uh, a few of them. So uh, yeah, here's the Windows 1.0 setup. We're going to press C for continue. And it obviously has not detected a hard drive, so it says to set up Microsoft Windows on a floppy disk, you need the setup disk, build disk, utilities disk, and font disk, which are disks uh, one, two, three, and four. We're going to click on, or rather, press C for continue. Before you, you actually set up Windows, it wants you to create a backup of the uh, master disk. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that. So we'll hit B. And so it says the backup procedure works by running your copy of the DOS utility discopy.com. Please put your DOS disk in drive A, which we have it in drive A. So we'll hit continue. It'll read off of that. 
This procedure copies or backs up your master disks so that you may store them away for safekeeping. Put the master disk in drive A, put a blank disk in drive B. So I assume it's talking about uh, diskette number one here. Uh, so we're going to put that into drive A. And then we're going to grab a blank diskette and we'll put this one into drive B. And then it runs disk copy, so we'll press return. So it's going to format the destination disk and then it copies. All right, so we've got backup copies of all six of the diskettes, which is great. Now you could have just done that by running disk copy just in DOS, but it's nice that the setup kind of walks you through that process here. So we're now going to move on to the uh, main portion of the setup, which is actually setting it up. So we're gonna press S to set up Windows system. And it's worth noting, you don't have to back up the master disk to advance to the next portion of the setup, but uh, it's just recommended that you do that. Uh, so now we're going to choose our keyboard uh, layout. We're just going to choose one for United States. We have no pointing device, which will make this really interesting to use. Uh, and we have an IBM or compatible color graphics adapter. Uh, so we're going to go with one. And now it's going to create a Windows system disk. So we put a blank diskette into drive A. So we'll do just that. And we'll hit C to continue. And now it's going to start copying. And now it needs the build diskette in drive B. So we will uh, give it just that. That is diskette number two. Now it's worth noting that we could just do this whole setup process with the backup copies that we just made. But I figured, you know, to keep things kind of authentic here, we would just use the originals for this first setup process. And, you know, verify that all these diskettes even work, which, I mean, I'm sure they do because we were able to make backup copies of them without any disk errors or anything. But yeah, I just finished uh, with the build disk, so it says your new system disk is ready. Later, you will add to it some information about your hardware. For now, please remove the system disk from drive A and label it Microsoft Windows System Disk. So, okay, we'll do just that. Yeah, it wants to create the startup disk now. Okay, so let me pop in another blank diskette here. Oh no, formatting disk track failed. Okay, this diskette might have a problem then. Um, let me go ahead and grab a different one. Yeah, I just bought a listing of assorted blank diskettes off of eBay, but the seller did not test all of them, so he wasn't, you know, guaranteeing that they were all going to work. But I've had a good uh, streak of luck so far. So we'll try a different one here. Okay, now that's interesting. Um, it did not take nearly as long. <laughs> It did not even say copying files when I put in this one here, so I wonder if it just kind of skipped that, which means that we don't have uh, <laughs> we don't have all the necessary files on the Windows startup disk, but it wants us to put the DOS disk get into drive B uh, so that it can copy DOS over to the startup disk, because I'm pretty sure the way this works is you put the startup disk in drive A and the program disk or the system disk in drive B when you start up your system, and uh, will it automatically load Windows? I don't know. Um, you might have to type win at the DOS prompt, but uh, so we're going to say yes, install DOS, so it's going to do that. Uh, transferring system failed. Oh boy, yeah, I think uh, the diskette swamp we just did kind of screwed things up a little bit. Um, that's not good. Uh, you know what, let me try, just for the heck of it, let me put in the one that it just arrowed out on before. No, it says it failed. Huh, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, we can, I mean, we can just say no here. Well, it looks like um, it hadn't started copying files when I had this diskette in the drive. I guess it was just formatting it and it just errored out because it said copying files there. And now it says startup diskette is ready. So we're gonna remove it from the drive, label it startup disk, and we'll hit C to continue. And okay, so now we gotta get the system disk back out. You can see how kind of, uh, somewhat convoluted the setup processes. So we're gonna put the system disk back into drive A, and then we're gonna put the utilities disk into drive B. So we're gonna take out the DOS diskette there, and um, yeah, you really wanna make sure you label all this stuff properly. Let's just, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Um, so let me reach for the utilities disk, which is uh, number three. Put that into drive B and we'll continue. And yeah, this is where it'll ask you if you want to set up a printer. We're going to say no, so we should be able to skip an entire... Yeah, now it wants the font disk, so we can just pull this one back out and put the fonts diskette into drive B and hit C. 
and now I'll copy some more stuff to the Windows system disk. And that's it, we're done. So we haven't even used the desktop application or that well, disk six is Windows right. So uh, that you just have to put in when you have Windows running. Um, but we'll take out uh, diskette number four. And so now we just hit quit. Um, and of course we don't have, uh, so I'm curious um, what's going to happen here. So the start of this, this is not going to have DOS on it because it wasn't able to copy all that over. So this should not have a command interpreter on it. So yeah. So that means we're still going to have to start up the system with uh, the DOS diskette in the drive. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll load the command interpreter into memory. Then, once it finishes reading it from it there, we'll take out the DOS diskette, put the startup diskette into drive A, and then put the system diskettes into drive B. Then, if we do a directory listing on drive A here, uh, you'll see it's win startup, so we have win.com in here, and if we swap over to B, this is where all of the, uh, you know, system files and everything are gonna be stored. Um, so, you see we got, msdos.exe for the msdos executive. You got a, a few other exes in there. So we'll go back to A and we'll run win. And here's the moment of truth. Hey, there we go. Windows 1.03 on this lovely um, amber display. I've never actually seen Windows running on one of these, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting because uh, using Windows 1.03 without a mouse is not really the most pleasant experience. It was certainly designed for use with a mouse. So let's hit uh, Alt F and go over to special uh, change directory and wait for that menu to come up. Uh, we'll change to B. I think that's the, I think that's the way you have to change uh, drives in here, you know, if you're not using the mouse. But yeah, you can see we don't have like any um, executable files on here aside from the MS-DOS executive, which is what we're running right now, obviously. That's the whole interface for uh, Windows 1.0. So we're going to take out the startup disk because we don't need that anymore. And we'll pop in the desktop applications disk, which is disk five of five. Um, into drive A, and then we will swap back. So we'll do Alt, uh, I think we just do Alt S, down, change directory, A, that menu loads up much faster now. And on this disk, we should have like paint, and yeah, so we got calendar, card file, clipboard, clock, control panel. Let's open up the clock. There it is, there's the clock. And uh, so you see, it, it actually does read some files off of uh, drive B there. Uh, so yeah, there's the current time. Uh, well, not the current time. The time is set uh, <laughs> incorrectly. Um, but yeah, it's just it's so like dumb using Windows 1.0 without uh, without a mouse. I don't have a mouse that I can hook up to this thing. Um, so I think if we do Alt, um, how do we get to that menu up there? Um, alt Tab should uh, let us tab to like I think we do Alt Tab uh, Enter. Yeah, and that should bring up, so yeah, there's the MS-DOS executive. So let's open up control panel and try to maybe mess around with some of this stuff. Of course, we can't really change the color of anything because we, you know, we're on like a monochrome amber display here. And yeah, there's our wonderful color sliders that we can't, uh, <laughs> we can't see any of those color changes in there. So we'll just get out of that. And to get out of this, um, I think we just do Alt I and then back to here and just uh, close that. And oh, look at that. Here's clock. So how do we quit out because we just alt tab to get back to the ms dos executive how do we close out of clock when there's no um like there's not an alt f alt x um i'm just hitting alt like anything here oh it's alt spacebar okay that's what brings it up so uh, let's go to about view the about info so uh yeah Clock 1.02. okay so we're not uh, we're not not on clock 1.03 um but yeah so we'll get out of that and we will take a look at right in a second here. I do want to open up paint because oh, we've got paint and of course we got reversey. Of course we got to mess with reversey. Uh, but yeah, I, I am going to put in the Windows right uh, diskette in a moment here. So yeah, using paint with a uh, with a keyboard is hilarious because you just like the mouse pointer comes up here. You just use the arrow keys to move it around. Oh, look at that. Not enough disk space to run paint. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's just going to do the same thing again. That's unfortunate. Um, I would, I mean, it's not even reading from drive B. I would imagine, I mean, we could like take out the system disk and try to put in a blank disk here. Um, I don't think that's gonna make a difference. In fact, it might ask us to put the system disk back in. 
Um, but let's just try it. Yeah, like it's not even reading from drive B, so... I wonder, can you just not run paint on a floppy disk configuration of uh, Windows 1.0? At least in in this configuration, uh, it's not a memory problem. You see, it said not enough disk space because we have plenty of memory. I mean, we double the uh, memory requirement for this. Um, so oh, I want to keep this in. Uh, we'll put that back in. We'll put the uh, system disk back into drive B. Um, so let's try reverse E. And you see it is reading from the system disk. And yeah, there it is. There's Reversi. Uh, so it's going to be the same thing here. The mouse cursor comes up on the screen. And we have to use the arrow keys to move it to each square here. So, um... I'm, uh... You're, you're white, right? Yeah, so... We'll do that. And let's just play a game of Reversi here. Why not? See how... See how long, uh... How long this takes. Oof. That's going to be hard to come back from. Um, oof, look at that. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong... Um, <laughs> the way that the... So, the arrow keys are the numpad here. Um, you just have to press uh, numlock for it to actually register it as the number, you know? But, uh, so it's 8, 4, 6, and 2. I'm hitting 5 to go down because, you know, I'm so used to the modern um, arrow key layout. So, you have to go down a key there. Um, but let's see, let's see, huh. Oh, ooh, we got a double here. That's a nice one. Um, we can do that, we can go down here. I forget, is there, is there a difficulty setting? I don't know. Let's go down here. Um, hmm. We can do that, uh... No, I don't want to do that. Um, oof. I must pass, yeah. How do we pass? Um, is that just game pass? Okay, Alt P. Yeah, this is, uh, oof. The uh, CPU might come back here. Alright, there we go. Ooh, boy. Um... Yeah, the CPU is definitely coming back here. Yeah, I lost by 36. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, th that's pretty abysmal. But yeah, is there a difficulty? So, yeah, skill right here. Okay, so we run beginner. Um, we could change that to master if we want to. Um, but that's reversey. Uh, we'll just go to about, why not? So is this going to be uh, 1.02 as well, or we yeah, don't know, 1.03? So, uh, yeah, for for whatever reason, that other program was 1.02. Uh, but yeah, so that's reversey. Can you believe it? And so you know, we got Notepad. We're going to kind of just skip Notepad. We're going to take a look at Write here in a moment, which is like Notepad but just better. And Calculator. You want to open up the massive full screen calculator because Windows 1.0 couldn't do overlapping windows. And I think here you see we don't have the mouse cursor, I believe. Um, we just turn on NumLock here and we just, yeah, enter in uh, the numbers just on the, we, we just use the, you know, number pad for everything. And to end off this video, why don't we take a look at the most boring program ever, Microsoft Windows Write. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> maybe not the most boring program ever, but, you know, definitely... Definitely up there, I'd say. I think, yeah, to refresh a directory, can we just, um, no, we can't do that there. I think we might have to just change directory to the current directory. Um, because, yeah, run, load, copy, get info, delete, view, that's not going to be anything. We don't have anything here. Create directory, change directory. Yeah, um, so we have to do change directory and then just change it back to A. Which is what we're already in, and then it will just reload the, you know, the contents of the drive. So here's right, and yeah, here it is. Uh, it's all loaded up. So why don't we just type out, I don't know, hello world, uh, I am writing this awesome document on a Zenith uh, data systems... Uh, I already forgot the model number of this computer. Uh, Zenith data systems uh, portable PC uh, that is really really cool i know i spelled that wrong really r-e-a-l-y really cool and i mean we could save this if we want to why don't we try to save something so we'll do alt f um now i'm not going to want to save this to the program disk 
Um, so we'll bring this up and we'll just pop in a, a blank disk head into drive B. And we'll just save this as a B colon slash, if I can find backslash, just call this right. And there it's saving. You can see the light is on for drive B. Cannot read from, oh, this might be the, <laughs> I think this is the, uh, the, the bad diskette. All right, let's try a, a different one here. Cause dude, I want to save this freaking file. Insert one, yeah, then we need the Windows system disk in drive B. Um, so I guess we have to, oh, that just saved it to the Windows system disk. Okay. Um, yeah, cause write.wri. Um, I would imagine that we could probably take out the write disk and put like a blank disk in the drive A and then just do uh, Alt F save and then just save this to like drive A as just like test. And there we go. So yeah, you just have to take out the write disk. So yeah, you want to leave the system disk. Basically that has to stay in drive B. So like drive A is just the, the one drive that you're able to swap disks uh, in and out of, you know, as you need to. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to say. That is installing Windows 1.03 on a Zenith Data Systems portable PC from the 1980s. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video and want to get early access to my future episodes, I do have a Patreon down below that you could check out, or you could become a channel member. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.